Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this day because this is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. God, you are so amazing. You are so awesome. You are so powerful. I, as God, as always, I acknowledge you as being the engineer of our environment, the architect of the universe, and the highest personality in philosophy. Nobody can compare to you. For you are the word made flesh and dwelt among us. And John said, we beheld his glory, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We thank you for this moment, God, whether we're here by invite or here by repeat presence, it's providential that we are here. You've orchestrated this moment for us to be here together. Whether those who are streaming in the virtual space or those who are in person, God, make us one now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Have thine own way, O oh God. Touch the neighbor to my left and to my, my right. Touch the neighbor behind me and in front of me. I don't know what they need from you, but God, uh, don't allow anything to disrupt what they need from you now. And we give you praise. Now, Father, as always, I ask you to give me the mind of the wise and the tongue of the learned. When you say stop, I'll quit. When you say yield, I'll slow down. And everything is for your glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. If you would, while you're standing, hold up the word of God. It's our custom here to confess over the word of God. Say, I believe absolutely everything that this book says about my life my family, my future, my finances, my feelings, and my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13, and I'll be reading from the New Century Version, and uh, it's, it's familiar to those who read the Word of God, but I'm going to act as if nobody has ever read it and speak from that particular vantage point. It's very interesting, uh, uh, the world that we live in, yeah. the people that we encounter, yeah. and uh, even ourselves is very interesting. And God, in, in his infinite wisdom, uh, so wonderfully and wondrously put us together with our personality, our in intellect and ingenuity and the ability to respond and be proactive and to relate. Uh, and so this really speaks to the uniqueness of who you are. Amen. Yeah. Just say, I'm unique. I'm unique. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And the word of God reads, and it's on screens for translations purposes, it says, when Jesus entered the city of Capernaum, an army officer came to him begging for help. The King James says a centurion. Verse 6 says, the officer said, Lord, my servant is at home in bed. He can't move his body and is in much pain. Jesus said to the officer, I will go and heal him. The officer answered, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come into my house. How many times have we told Jesus, don't come to my house because I'm not worthy. Yes. Mm. He continued and said, you only need to command it. And my servant will be healed. I too am a man under the authority of others. And I have soldiers under my command. I tell one soldier, go, and he goes. I tell another soldier, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and my servant does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. He said to those who were following him, I tell you the truth. This is the greatest faith I have found even in church. I mean, 
in Israel. Many people will come from the east and from the west and will sit and eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But those people who should be in the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where people cry and grind their teeth with pain. Then Jesus said to the officer, go home. <laughs> Your servant will be healed just as you believed he would. And his servant will was healed that same hour. The word of God for the people of God. You can be seated. I, I normally go into uh, a monologue or give you a wonderful introduction uh, as to how um, the message is going to begin. But uh, I will reveal this, the subject matter from the very surface of the of the message and the beginning of the message and then we'll have a conversation from there. Uh, today on this is fourth Sunday in April, um, I want to talk to you all this morning about premium faith. Premium faith. Say it with me. Premium faith. Say it again. Premium faith. Now this time, say it like you mean it. Premium faith. Mm. I know as I was reading the text, you thought I misspoke when Jesus said that he hadn't seen great faith like this in all of the church. And, uh, and, but the Bible says Israel, which is a representation of the church, because you have to understand that this, that this centurion soldier, this officer, uh, is not who is subject to the emperor uh, of Rome. He is not, he is not a Jew. He is a Gentile, and which means he does not believe in the ways of Judaism or Christianity. So for him to even be coming to Jesus, talking to Jesus about this is absolutely astounding because he doesn't believe in the same way or he shouldn't believe in the same way according to his culture and nationality. Amen? So it's absolutely astounding that this conversation is even taking place, you know. Uh, has something ever blew your mind that you know you that you just didn't think it should work out that way, but it worked out that way. And you're like, oh, my God, I, I didn't expect this. This is a conversation of, of Jesus talking to a Gentile that people just, you know, shouldn't expect, especially to the level that the conversation and the request went. Amen. That's why you can't count anybody out. You can't. I know they may not be living right yet but you can't count them out. How soon we forget when we weren't living right and somebody did not count us out, but they kept praying for us. Thank God they didn't lock the door of the church when we wanted to come that day that we could hear how good God was and how he died for our sins and now that we have become the righteousness of God because of Christ Jesus. Whatever you do, do not count people out. I told you that this, 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 this uh, message today deals with the uniqueness of who you are and I want you to say it with me again. Say, I am unique. Yeah, yeah, you're unique. Now that's, that's, that's easy to say but kind of hard to emulate or to live out based on this cookie cutter society that we live in. Mm. The trends and the winds that we have to abide by or we choose to abide by. And do you know that, you know, uh, uh, the people who really live well in this life are those who live organically to the nature of who they are. Mm. They get rich off of the copycats. Oh, 
But everybody say regular. I hear people all the time say, I just want to be regular. I don't want to do nothing special. I just want to be regular. I just Can I just talk to you for a minute? Yeah, we'll have church in a minute. Trust me. I just want to be regular. I just want to be regular. I just want to be, I don't want to do too much. I just want to get up. I want to stay in my own lane. You know, I just don't want to bother nobody. Just let me go to work, come home, pay me what I've earned. Let me pay my taxes and pay my bills and just put a little to the side. And just let me just just go on a cruise on Carnival Victory every now and then. And I'll be okay, you know. Just let me sip on a little red or white. I'm fine. Don't just just let me be. Let me just binge Netflix every now and then. Now, Bishop, I ain't going to be in church every Sunday. Sunday, but but I but but I I'm gonna catch at least once or twice a month. But you know I, I don't want to volunteer. Don't want to get too deep in the ministry. I just want to be regular. I don't want now you know because it's it's. But regular, do you know what regular means? Regular means to be average. I ain't nothing wrong with average. Regular means to be average. Where were you? I dug a little bit deeper into that and. You know, to, to be average is actually, it means to neither be good or bad. You're not good. You're not bad. you just average. I took it a step further to help you really understand what average and being regular is. It's just, you know, it, it's a place where hope cannot thrive. And it's where mediocrity is a constant result. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you just want to be average. You just want to be average. Tell somebody, I say, I don't, I want, I want to make no noise. Tell somebody, I say, I want to make no noise. You know, I don't know if this is you. If you don't, don't say this, it's not you. Just, I want to be average. I, I want to be average. If you don't want to make any waves, then you need to give up the fingerprint that God gave you. And, and, and just, and just uh, subside on all of the uniqueness that God has given you and the ability that he's given you. And then just fit in. Just, just, just be the number. Just, just, you know, just come and just do what you need to do, and and that's what it is. Tell somebody, just, just average. Just be, just be regular. I want to be a regular person, whatever that means. I just told you what it means. It just means I can't. I, I don't need to hope because I don't. I'm not hoping to get better, and I'm not hoping to get worse. I'm just, I'm just doing what I need to do. I'm just doing what I need to do. But watch this, watch this. Now I look at the text here and, and I realized something that was very unique. It was it was it was so powerful. I had to really um I had to really look at it again. And I look at this 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 officer has a situation. Now some theologians believe that the servant at his house could also have been his son. Because servant and son was often interchangeable. Well, whoever it was, he loved them very dearly. To the point that he did not want to see him die. Loved them to the point that he either heard about Jesus or saw Jesus uh, do some work in the distance but yet he went contrary to his predisposition as a Gentile to have a conversation with a Jewish rabbi yeah. <laughs> teacher in verse 5 he approaches Jesus and he made a request now watch this the request was not extraordinary because Jesus just received a similar request a few verses prior. Because he healed a sick man that came down from the hill. So for Jesus to receive requests of healing was nothing extraordinary. It was, it was nothing unique. It was nothing to get out of bed for. It was regular. For Jesus to receive requests to be healed. It was, it was average for Jesus to 
receive requests. And so, the, uh, so it appears that the centurion's request was just a regular request. I, I want to submit to you, there's nothing special about you being here Sunday morning. There's, there's nothing special about you attending Sunday morning church. There's nothing special about you coming and hearing a word from the Lord. People online are listening to the Bible. And people who really don't have great faith come to church every now and then. And so people do understand. A few weeks ago, we had Resurrection Sunday. And it was full to capacity. And people just came to church. Because that's the regular thing to do. If not careful, you can come to church all your life, get, get hit in the head by your grandmama and your mama, say, you, you going to stay with me? You come in the church. You, I mean, you sing in the choir. I mean, you've ushered on the doors. I mean, you cook in the kitchen. And you've done all that wonderful stuff and still have not developed a relationship with God. And so now just coming to church for you is average. It's, it's regular. Nothing really to it. Just going here to hear what the preacher you're going to say today and you know, some of those preachers have been preaching so long you can almost preach what they're going to preach when they say it you can point when the, the, this one I know when he going to shout I know when she going to shout I know what music they're going to play I know what songs they're going to sing and so now the Sunday morning experience is just a regular thing to do and so now at best my relationship with God is just mediocre I don't expect it to get any better I don't expect it to get any worse just let me do what I've been doing all these years because I've been getting by just fine I am a regular Christian so asking God for stuff ain't special everybody do that you don't believe me watch this how many of you ever asked God for something raise your hand raise my look around y'all See, I'll tell you, ain't nothing special about that. Ain't nothing unique about that. You're not the only one. Watch this. Let me tell you something else. How many of you pray and talk to God? Here, show your hand. Okay, look at look, look, look. Y'all see that? Ain't nothing. And most of us praying because we asking God for something. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing special. Ain't nothing special about that. <laughs> y'all with me? Stay with me. So I'm trying to get you. I want you to see, I want you to see how how regular your behavior is. Good. That like you ain't doing nothing nobody else is doing. That's just like tomorrow, Keith. Just like tomorrow, Keith. They're going to say, you girl, you know, I got to go to work tomorrow. Well, so do I. <laughs> I mean, you're doing what most adults that want something do. Do you want a star? How many saved people I got in here? Throw your hand up at me. Make some noise. Save folks. <laughs> So watch this. Do you want to start because you come to worship service on a Sunday? I thought that's what saved folk do. Yes. Worship God. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, you'll be glad I'm here today. It was a rough one today. Really? Okay. So his request was average. His request was Mediocre. His request was regular. But it was his response to Jesus <laughs> that was premium. It was his response that was of a different value because now watch this everybody pretty much requests stuff from God but everybody don't respond to God in the same way can I tell you something it does not take faith to ask <laughs> you think it doesn't require faith to ask God for anything but it definitely takes faith in how you respond to God. My request only takes my vocality and my ability to articulate. But my response requires faith in God. Whew. Watch this. 
Jesus, my servant at the house is paralyzed and he's in much pain and, 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 and I don't want to see him go through like this. And Jesus said, you know what? No problem. I'll come on over to the house and I'll heal him. Most of us right there. Yes, Lord, my prayers have been answered. Come on, Jesus. Walk with me to the house. Jesus with me. He's on my way to my house. He's getting ready to change my situation. That's where the shout is. That's where the organ fires up because Jesus is on my way to my house. Glory to God. That's where the hoop starts because Jesus is on the way to my house. That's where we get happy because Jesus is on the way to my house. He's about to fix what I asked him for. He's about to change what I've been waiting for. He's He's about to shift what I've been going through because Jesus is on the way to my house. But the centurion said, no. Wait a oh, wait, brother. He just, Jesus just told you yes. And you say no. Wait a minute. Jesus is giving you what you asked for, but you don't want it. Wait, whoa, this ain't the church I'm a part of. You missing something here. And I had to ask the centurion, I said, hey, centurion, talk to me for a minute. I got to preach this message this Sunday. Now, why in the world would you tell Jesus no when we've been prone that when Jesus, you know, uh, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. That's the whole song. God bless her heart. That's what we used to, right? If you want to get church good and hot, just tell folk God getting ready to do it. That's all you got to say. God, sleepy eyes will open. Silent hands will start clapping. I mean, a move, moveless feet will start moving. Just tell folk God get ready to do it. Yeah. yeah. Tell everybody for watching this. Look at them as a neighbor. God's getting ready to do it. Look, didn't they, didn't they smile at you? I told you. You don't even know what they're getting ready to do, but just, just to hear it sounds good, don't it? Yeah, yeah, God getting ready to do it because cause, cause we program like that. Well, let's, let's try it again. Say, neighbor, God getting ready to do it. Now, let me, let me add something to it. Now, high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, God getting ready to do it. See, look, if I keep on saying this, it'll get started and you don't even know what God getting ready to do because there's something in us that said, I know God getting ready to do it. But watch this. We override how worthless we are while making the request we want. As if we deserve to get what God getting ready to do. Lord, help me in here. But, but if we can just have some introspection just for a moment. Before I ask this about God, I know I don't deserve the end result that I'm asking for. And so I need to approach God with a sense of humility that even if he tells me no, I can't get mad because I really don't deserve the yes anyway. Is there anybody know what I'm talking about in here? That God, oh Lord. I, I, trying to teach. Told you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, and so his response was absolute. I mean, I mean, that's just like you got a kid. I mean, folk got children in. They come home with a bad report card, right? And, and you tell them, no, you can't go. No, you're not getting it. And then, you know what they had another do? Mom, why? Let, let me show you. Do you see all of these? U's and E's and F's and you ask him why you know they act like they ain't done nothing but the kids get that from the parents because they see us asking God all the times we fail and then God says no and we why why So requests are regular. But his response made Jesus marvel. His response astonished.
punished God. Wait a minute. I'm getting ready to do what you want me to do. And you telling me, hold up. I've, Jesus said, I, 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 I ain't seen stuff like this. Because watch this. In, in, in verse 8, it says, the officer answered. Lord, I am not worthy for you to come into my home. Mm. You only need to command it and my servant will be healed. I, I, I look at it like this. You, you, know, you know when you can prepare for company? You know, you got time enough to get the blunt smell out your house. You don't, you don't, oh, I'm sorry, you don't smoke that stuff. Uh, uh, you, you can hide the liquor bottles in the back of the cabinet and, and you know, you, you got, you can, you can vacuum the floor and you can put the free breeze and the micro band in there and all that, the potpourri on the stove. And, and so, I mean, everything is nice. You don't put the unfolded clothes in the closet, don't you? Because I know ain't nobody going in there. And so, make love, you've been living like that your entire life and you just cleaned up your house just for an hour of company because you were expecting them to come but that, that's really not how you live y'all not helping me glory to God because you know you expecting company you ain't clean up you just rearrange and so sometimes we gotta understand that when we invite God into our life we don't need to rearrange we need to clean up hallelujah glory to God I need to talk to somebody there's an old song that says I move from my old house and I moved from my old friends and I moved from my old way of life. Thank God I moved out to a brand new life. God have mercy. You keep rearranging. <laughs> rearranging. Tell somebody to clean up. Uh, you know, I don't listen... You know, this is, this is one of my dad's favorite, favorite singing groups, the Wiggins Brothers. They used to sing that. Clean around your own front door before you try to clean around mine. Take six months to mind you and take six months to leave other folks clean around. Yeah. yeah before you're going to judge me. Is your carpet dirty? For you gonna side eye me? Does your house smell funky? All right, y'all see, I'm just teaching. So he he said Jesus he he marveled at this. Back up a note right quick. He marveled at this. Doesn't matter. He marveled at this. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. He said, you just need to command it and my servant will be healed. He, he, said, he, said, he said, Lord, the reason why, watch this. Now he's going to give Jesus an analogy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Jesus is the one who used to teaching in parables and giving analogies. But now the centurion is talking to the rabbi and going to give him an analogy. He said, I too am a man in authority. I am under authority and I also have a soldier's under me he said and when I say something uh, the soldier hears what I say without question and they do it and so Jesus says I know that you are in authority just like I am a representative of the emperor and so when I give the order to the soldier it's not my order I'm speaking on behalf of the emperor and so Jesus when you give the order you're speaking on behalf of the father so you don't need to go to my house because I understand authority. The only thing you got to do is say the command. Yes, Jesus said, wait. I haven't seen. I've been around regular folk all day making regular requests. I've been around mediocre people, even the ones that's hanging with me is mediocre. He, 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 he shot them all. Even my leaders don't even have this kind of faith. 
Because they regular, they, 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 they didn't got used to me being around, but, but it took somebody from the streets that don't know the church liturgy, that don't know the hymns, that don't know what time the service starts and when it needs to be over, don't know how to log on to the app. It took somebody who just needed God in their life. God have mercy. So I said, wait a minute. He said, I ain't seen, I've been around regular, regular believing people. But this faith is different. Jesus called it, this is the greatest faith. I've seen and I look up the word greatest and found the word premium Lord help me in here oh wait a minute hallelujah to God Jesus said this is the first case of premium faith I've been looking for it but ain't nobody had it and it came from the most unexpected place I'm tired of people that's just regular I'm tired of people that just average I'm sick of people that just want to get by. Aren't you just tired of just getting by? It's frustrating just to get by when you know God has put better on the inside of you. Uh, look at somebody said, better is inside of me. I'm tired of just making it. I'm tired of just partly just getting it together. I'm tired of just rubbing two pennies together. I'm tired of just hardly getting to the service. I'm tired of feeling like I'm just hanging on. I'm tired of feeling like I just got the anointing. I'm tired of feeling like my prayer ain't going nowhere because I got better inside of me. I'm not regular. I'm not average. I'm not a counterfeit. I'm not a cookie cutter. I am unique. Will you tell somebody say I am unique? Hallelujah to God. I need somebody unique to give God a praise in here for about seven seconds and shout glory. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When you realize, I ain't regular. I'm built different. Hallelujah. It may have killed you, but I'm going to live through this. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, I might as well say it. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall be in my mouth somebody say yes say yes give God a praise in here if you believe that you're unique find another unique person and say we are not regular I got to get this. Let me let me tell you. Let me let me give you a quick litmus test to let you know that you ain't regular. When you get around regular stuff and it get on your nerves. When you get around average people and it irritates you. <laughs> And you trying to figure out if it's a demon. It ain't a demon. You just in the wrong environment. You in the wrong circle. I better get out of here quick because I find where's the exit? Let me get out of here. I don't want this stuff to rub up on me because God made me the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, above and not beneath. Let me get. Let me give you another thing to show you're not regular. What you've been through ain't been normal. Hallelujah. When you look at the statistics and see how many people didn't make what you went through, but yet you made it and you still smiling on the other side of this. You ain't made out of regular stuff. There's an anointing on you that God built inside your DNA. Hallelujah. Even though mom and daddy may not be together right now, but you here and their only job was to get you on this side of time so you can see how bad your God is and the fingerprint he has on your life. I need to talk to somebody who realizes God's hand is on your life. Give God a praise. In yeah, so 
Every, I'm almost finished. The, the majority. They making requests. The majority making requests. Because <laughs> everybody want to get better. So everybody praying, Lord, make me better. Everybody want to, they want to gain more. So I press, Lord, let me gain more. Everybody want to expand and grow. So everybody's praying, Lord, I want to expand and grow. Those are regular prayers. Those are average prayers. Because the question is, if God answers that, then what you going to pray for next? Your prayer life is over. That's why he never answers that, because at least he want to hear from you. Lord help me he said if I answer this prayer I know I won't hear from them for another two years so, so let me delay the answer until they can develop some premium faith that realize that the true power ain't in the request that the true power is in the response it's how I respond to God and I need to talk to somebody in here some of y'all sitting here looking at me but I want you to respond to God as if it's already done I mean he ain't did it yet but it's already done it ain't hit your life yet but it's already done and so I'm gonna praise him in advance anybody got an advanced praise in your spirit Lord this ain't even a good part of the message But can y'all sit for one second? Come on, Jazz, help me out, sweetie. Mediocrity. We hear about it a lot. But do you know why it's so hard to break out of it? Because it's neither bad, nor is it good. I'm in the middle. Last time I checked, if you walk down the middle of the road, you won't be walking too much far. <laughs> Even God don't like middle of the road stuff. He said, hot or cold, I'll take you. But that, that lukewarmness, yeah, I'll spit you out. Because when you are mediocre, you live in a subdivision I call of just getting by. This is where I live. I'm just, and I'm happy with just getting by, just little me, little, just getting by. But newsflash, what did I just tell you to tell your neighbor? As a believer, you're not regular. <sighs> tell him, tell him, I said, I'm not regular. I, I know I look ordinary and I, and, and, and I may look like somebody you know, and you may have been knowing me for a little while, but 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 I'm not regular like you think I am. I am extraordinary. Uh, I, I, I am a premium individual. Yeah. Lord, help me in here. I just need to talk to somebody who realized that every believer that when you give your life to God you, you should leave the space of mediocrity because you serve an amazing God. You serve an amazing God that some say he's a bridge over troubled water. That some say that he's a doctor in a sick room. That some say he's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's an extraordinary with God. Somebody needs to understand that you have too much history with God to see that God is anything but regular. You ought to look at my life and see how wonderful God is. Somebody in here didn't think that you would be where you are right now because your God is so extraordinary. He looked beyond your fault and he saw your need. Oh my God, I might as well go ahead and preach. I feel it in here. And so this is what needs to understand. I know you look good right Right now, but you hadn't always looked like you look right now. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't look like what 
I've been through. I got some scars that you might can't see. I've been through some battles that the wounds have already been healed. But I had to fight my way to get here. I had to fight for my sanity. I had to fight for my kids. I had to fight for my house. I had to fight for my job. I had to fight for my education. I had to fight for my deliverance. Every day, the enemy tried to destroy me. Every day, demons were trying to attack me. But I serve an extraordinary God who has his arms around me. And everything that the devil tried, it had to fail. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, God will condemn. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am a premium saint. There's a value to my life because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Hallelujah. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed me whiter than snow. Is there anybody in here that's glad you're saved? Know you're saved. Believe you're saved. Feel like you're saved. I need you to give God a praise like a saved prayer person would give God because living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Oh glorious day. Grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor you are not regular. You are not average. You are not mediocre. But you are extraordinary because God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world not to condemn the world but through him the world might be saved you cried your last tear you've had your last heartache your last emotional breakup because God is here to set the captive free God is here to save the sin sick soul the Holy Ghost is here to rock you in his arms somebody said he'll rock you somebody said he'll rock you somebody I say he'll rock you. Say yeah. Say yeah. Give God a praise in here. Yeah. I got to go to my seat. But I come to tell somebody, you are not regular. High five somebody say, I'm not regular. I'm not regular. I need you to tell three people, you're not regular. You not Come on, tell three people, you're not regular. Come on, get to somebody and tell them, you're not regular. If they ain't talking back to you, find somebody else. If they ain't talking, they just regular. I need you to find a premium saint. I say, I need you to find a premium saint. And tell them, I'm not regular. I've been through hell and high water. I didn't just come this Sunday morning just so you can look at me. But I came to give God praise because he rescued me. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master from the sea heard my despairing cry and from the water. Yeah, 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 hallelujah. First Peter 2 and 9 said, but you are a chosen people, <laughs> a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I like this part. You are God's special possession. What? I'm God's special possession. <sighs> that we may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Say to yourself, say self, you are God's precious possession. And God don't own anything average. His collection makes the Louvre in Paris looks like the bargain basement. 
<sighs> makes the Mona Lisa look like penny candy because anything that God owns hallelujah is not average you can't find it nowhere because God owns you nobody else can find you nowhere Lord tell somebody say, I'm expensive <laughs> Lord, I know it's hard to say. That. Listen, I said, I'm expensive. But now, Bishop, not me now. I'm just low main. No, uh, uh, listen, I said, I'm expensive. Do you know what you've been through? What you've been through wasn't cheap. Your tears weren't cheap. That crying wasn't cheap. Those prayers weren't cheap. I'm at the finish line. Can I tell y'all something? I've discovered that it's not the request that reveals your faith. It's your response. How will you respond? You can sit and listen to me all day long. Question is, when you leave this door, how are you going to respond to what God has said? Watch this. No one needing Jesus has ever declined his invitation to come. I think there's only two accounts where Jesus healed from a distance. This one here in Matthew, and then there's another one in John chapter 4. That Jesus, he didn't go, he just sent his word. That was not regular. That is premium. What the centurion showcase was rare. That's what the word premium means. It means rare. Uh, everybody say rare. Lord have mercy. Listen, single folk, let me tell you something. When you start dating somebody, you better tell them, listen, listen you're not dating no average girl. You ain't dating no average man. You, you dating somebody who's rare. There's a premium on me. I, I'm sorry if you saw 87 on my forehead, but I don't run on regular. Who am I talking to in here? Uh, look at somebody say, I don't run on regular regular. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm one of those European cars. If you try to put a regular on me, I start acting funny and thinking funny and looking crazy and living beneath my means. And so I got to get around somebody who sees the premium and don't mind paying for the premium. Is there anybody in here that understands? Be around folk that know your value, that don't try to reduce you to what they can can't afford about you. The devil is a lie. I'm a premium faith. Verse 10 says, Jesus heard this. He was amazed. He said to those following him. Now this was an insult. Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, Judas. Y'all don't even got this. Y'all with me. This guy he ain't never met with. He ain't never fished or nothing. He, he said, I tell you the truth. This is the greatest faith I've found. That means God is looking for it. God is looking for you to believe. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you want to go, if you want to be where God is not, it's called doubt because he ain't looking for that. He's looking for belief. Uh, he said, I ain't seen this even in Israel. In other words, Jesus was saying that this was premium faith. Are y'all with me? Everybody said premium faith. And here it is. The centurion's faith was not in the healing of Jesus. It was in his authority. See, we just want Jesus to do things and not understand his authority. The centurion understood his authority. So he knew whatever Jesus commanded would happen. So he didn't reduce Jesus to his primary care physician. God have mercy. I, I just need to talk to the one 
who's in authority. I love my wife. She's a very smart person. Now, she can go with the best of them on that telephone. I mean, she can now. I've seen her do it. I've seen her wait two and a half hours almost on hold. I don't know, because then she ride with me to get the answer she wanted. And this is what she always do. Now, she always say, she, 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 she don't say it like this, but she, it's really what she's telling me, you punking out. Because I don't have to, she don't say that, but just she's saying it in her nice wifey way. But I'd be like, whatever. You know, you do what you do. This is what she say. She say, um, she talks to me, uh, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Um, oh, evidently I'm talking to the wrong person. Can I, can I speak to your manager? Did she get to the next one? Oh, oh y'all too, huh? <laughs> she said, she said, then she, she get that person. She said, oh, oh, well, you just said what they said because evidently you must not the person making the decision. So can I speak to the person over you? So, so, so what I see her doing in a conversation, she's climbing the ladder. And, 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 and I used to like, my God, this woman. But what I realized, she's premium. And, and, and she can't run on regular. And so I got to be connected to folk that run on the same stuff that I run on. Hallelujah to God. I need to talk to somebody here that sees the value of who you are and won't stop at the first no you get. You must not realize you're not talking to a regular person. I'll shut this bank down until you tell me yes. I'll come here every day until you lock the door. You might call me crazy, but I'm going to get what I want because I got pre- Watch this. Let me tell you the benefit of premium, and I'm done. I don't hoop, so I hope y'all happy with that. Y'all ready? I drive, and don't judge me about what I'm telling you what I drive. Because I didn't start off driving that. I start off driving something regular. So regular that it almost didn't need me to drive it. I ain't had no money. We had this 19, I, I, 1985 Toyota Corolla, man. I hit, I, hit the, I hit the brake, it turned left by itself. <laughs> I had to fight when I broke. <laughs> yeah. I almost like lifting weights just to go to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, That's where I started, but that's not where I am. I, 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 it, it, it ran on 87. Y'all know what 87 is? You know, 87. Seven, not seven, seven. Eighty-seven. Come on, Brandon. You from you from the country. Don't 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 you do me like that. Don't let me call you out now. Y'all know what eighty-seven is. For those not from the country, eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Where do you see that at? The gas station. I I, I don't drive an American made car. I drive a, a German made vehicle. Uh suspension is wonderful. The handling is great. Uh, the rack and pinion is not of an American design. It's actually from a design from when they used to drive this race overnight. Um, can't think of the name of the race right now, but that's where the design comes from, and that's why the suspension and the handling is so wondrous, and you can go through different modes, and it's great. It's wonderful. The luxury is great. The drive is great. The ride is great. But one thing it does not do is run on regular. Matter of fact, if I look on the, on the gas thing, it says uh, at the lowest octane level you can put in this particular vehicle is 91. Well, we don't sell 91, so what you have to go to is 93. 93 is known as... 93 is known as, and I see, watch this, because 93 is known as premium. I can see some of y'all right now when you go to the gas station and you look on the billboard sign, so my God, a premium is... Ah, well, I, I, I look, I said premium. Well, I've been putting premium in so long, it really doesn't mean it's, it's it, because this is my fifth year, I mean, a German made vehicle, and so I'm used to the price. But one day, I, I, was, I was working at East Carolina University, and my car was almost on E, and they had the gas station right there. And I said, Let me hurry up and get here because I don't want to run out of gas. Well, in my haste, Brother Pope, I went and picked up the regular in my haste and fill the car 
I got maybe 200 yards from the gas station and it started shimming and bucking. I said, I done tore my car up. I said, let me call my mechanic. He says, where are you? He said, drive to the nearest auto parts store and get octane boost and pour the whole bottle in because you made a mistake in putting something mediocre into something used to running on premium. But you can fix it. God, help me here. But here's the best thing about premium is this. I like to go to Sam's Club and get my gas. <laughs> Any Sam Club folk in here? <laughs> I like Sam's Sam Club is just a little bit cheap. I like to go to Sam's Club and get my gas. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. When they really hit them price drops, boy, I mean the line is serious. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen. The line is serious. Ain't nobody jumping out of line. Everybody going to sit there and get the cheap gas. But this is what I found out, Brother Mike, is that because my car is a foreign car. Wait a minute. What do you mean, TC? My car is not a Ford. Nothing wrong with Ford. My car is not a Chevy. Nothing wrong with Chevy. My car is not a GMC. Nothing wrong with GMC. My car is not American made. Because my car comes from a country that drives on the right side of the vehicle, they put the gas tank on the passenger side and the reason why they put the gas tank on the passenger side is for safety if you run out of gas your body is not with traffic and you can put gas in on the safe side and that's not the only perk that it is but when I pull up to Sam's Club and there's long lines waiting to get regular gas help me in here guess what because my gas tank is on the other side the premium line has one car or two cars and what everybody else is waiting for I can drive up fill up and go off where I'm going and still look back and the regular folk are still in line what am I trying to tell you Jesus said I ain't got to go to your house centurion by the time you get home that servant gonna be healed and so if you're a regular folk just tell them get in Line. But if you're a premium faith person, God said, I ain't got to wait for you. I'll speed that. Well, the reason why y'all can't shout, because probably most of y'all gas tanks is on. It's on that side. It's on that side. But I want to. Even though I started on, I started on that side. <laughs> I started over there, but thank God I, I can change sides. <laughs> if you got regular in your tank, today's the day you can get some boost. Now I'm done, y'all. I didn't believe that stuff. I didn't believe it until I bought a, bought a Mercedes. I said, man, the gas is gay. I didn't believe that. I said, it's a money racket. Until I did it. I said, oh my God, this is real. Maybe, just maybe, some of us are not running as smooth as we can because we're putting stuff in us that we were never designed to run on. That doubt you have, God didn't give that to you. That cheap taste you keep living by, bargain basement mentality, ain't no wrong being frugal. Now, I'm not saying you got to buy a thing expensive. But where did that come from? I told you, mediocrity is hard because watch this, it's neither good nor bad. And most people say, well, at least it's running. But you never know. Let me say this, and I'm and come on, Reg, I'm finished. Let me say this. Um, my 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 car has air suspension, and the suspension is great. It's it's wonderful, 
and I, I, one of my tires was doing something weird. I could feel it because I ride in the car all the time. And I, I had my cousin with me, and he got in the car. He said, man, this is a smooth riding car. I said, dude, no, it ain't. I said, something wrong. He said, I can't feel it. But the reason why he couldn't feel it is because he was used to riding in something that did not have that particular technology. And so he thought my bad ride was a good ride. Lord have mercy. So maybe some of us have been riding in something so bad that when something just a little better come along and it's still bad, you think it's good. But I want to tell somebody, this is no judgment zone because it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And if you haven't started, if you're online, I want to tell somebody it's never too late to start. The centurion went home. Either his son or servant, either one, was up, out of pain, because Jesus commanded it. And watch this. Technically, he never said it out of his mouth. He just said, by the time you get home, he's going to be healed. Isn't that something? That's premium faith. Is trusting that while you're on your way to it, God done fixed it. That's country. God done fixed it. He's already fixed it. I need to talk to somebody. Stand to your feet. I'm finished. Maybe you done been around folk that been putting wrong stuff in your tank. And you've been trying to figure out Watch this. You done been to the shop, put it on the machine. They don't see nothing wrong. You done put your mentality out there. You just like, why is this stuff not working? Why is it, why doesn't it seem like I'm getting further than what I need to be? Because I've been around too much mediocrity. Too many, too many regular average thinking people. Because what's in you is not average. Power of Nation, let me tell you, if you're a member of this church, you're not average. Because let me tell you something. This is not your average church. We started with $30. That's three tens, y'all. A 20 and a 10. How you want to look at it? Six fives. 31s. That's how we started. Now our assets are seven figures. That ain't average. Hello? So if you just want an average church, this ain't the church for you. If you want a regular experience, this ain't the place for you. But this is a place of premium quality. Not because I'm the pastor, not because of people here. It's because God made us to be that way and we can't run off anything else anything else will slow us down 